Evening, Mayor. Evening. Mr. Mayor, somewhat ironically, maybe appropriately, my uh, pre-prepared statement tonight through you is to Ms. Greenman. Ms. Greenman, during your closing comments of the May 20th meeting, you stated that it took, and I'm quoting, a Russian to come here to explain American democracy. I personally was offended by that comment, and those are your words, not mine. Initially, I commend the fact that you're an immigrant to this country and were able to become an attorney. It's certainly no easy task. That's definitely an, an accomplishment in which, in which you should be very proud. However, your actions as taking that chair have been anything but, quote, democratic or offer any reason to be proud. You have demeaned city employees in emails, liking them to, quote, coiled snakes. An email you mocked a then employee's engagement ring and her personal relationship with another Hackensack resident. Again, an email you belittled an entire Hackensack family simply because it criticized this administration. You have stated that those who criticize this council's actions, quote, hate this city. Just last meeting, I asked you a series of questions as to your own statement at the May 5th Cal meeting about when you learned of Mr. Amarato's full-time county employment because I was shocked to hear you had a discussion regarding benefits with a vendor. You either gave me no response or replied, quote, not in the time period you were referring. For the record, the time period I was, I was referring was exactly the time period of your previous comments on the subject. This is not the open government we were promised, which I will address more at a later time, probably on Tuesday. I recognize how you choose to respond to my questions is entirely up to you. You are afforded that privilege. However, a lot of people watch the video of these meetings, and I'll let them decide if you are practicing your, quote, democratic preaching. However, what I find to be the most repugnant of your behavior occurred during your comments last meeting. A group of Hackensack employees elected to exercise their First Amendment rights by silently and respectfully protesting the sentiments of your comments. As an elected official who is here to preach us about American democracy, I would expect that you would recognize that the First Amendment and democracy goes both ways in this country. However, you decided to roll your eyes, chastise them, and lecture them by calling them, quote, disrespectful. These men and women do more for my home city than you can ever imagine and can in no way begin to duplicate. Free advice, whatever chance you get, you're much better off saying thank you and we're trying to work things out. I was born here, I was raised here, I graduated from here. I don't expect you to understand what that means to those of us who are fortunate enough to have done that. But maybe, maybe you should ask a few of those police officers who, have you, who you have chosen to bully about what it means. You can ask Mr. Sims, you can even ask Mr. LeBros, but those relationships might be a little tenuous at best. I'm sure you still won't get it though, because your service to this city only started 12 months ago when you took your seat on that dais. I obviously use the term, quote, service loosely, considering your attendance record, or more accurate, lack thereof. My point, I don't care where you're from. No one in the city needs or wants a lecture from you about anything. Now, let me ask you about your financial disclosure form. Why is your city of Hackensack income not listed? You submitted that under oath under the penalties of perjury. Your office- I believe it's listed. No? Nope. I don't make a statement unless I got the proof to back it up. Your office, your, your business office is listed as your home residence. I'm curious as to what the possible zoning violation of that may be, because you're not allowed to have a business office unless it's zoned in a commercially That's not commercial true. area. Okay. So if you wish to comment on any of the things I've said, I'm standing right here. Don't wait to the end of the meeting when I can't respond. I'm up here Absolutely. in front of everybody. How many times was I absent? Uh, in the last month, too. And before? Uh, at least once. Are you sure? I'm positive. I don't make statements. How many, how many times did we meet? How many times? In 12, in 12 months, how many times did the council meet? In 12 months, you missed three meetings. That's a lot. You were elected to be here. City business couldn't get done because you, you couldn't be here. You, were you and I don't ever? believe you were sick, but that's just besides the point. Okay. That, listen, you don't believe I you was missed sick? sick three times in 12 months? It happens. It happens. I've been on the Board of Education for two years. In over 50 meetings, I missed one because of a family <laughs> engagement. And to the mayor and, and Kathy's credit, 
Kathy missed once because I know she had pre-scheduled vacation, and I believe the mayor has been here every day or every meeting. That's I don't have to defend anybody up here, okay. but I'm just saying you know you're elected to do a job. Okay. Mr. Ortino has been AWOL for God knows how long. All right. And by the way, your new deputy clerk is here more than Mr. Ortino at probably you know 50 percent of the salary. Time's up, Jay. Thank you. Now, <laughs> Warden Dean Terrace Hackensack, um, Mr. Mr. Mayor, if you remember yes, correctly, at the last meeting that we had, I brought to you some paperwork with a state statue attached to it. Yes, sir. Regarding my, I've heard not even who about it. I have not received anything from the city saying. Uh, we're looking into the matter, or you know, you're not eligible for it. Or I haven't heard a word, and it's been a month. But I've seen that that is the practice of this city. I, I, I said before, there is a double standard in this city. Everybody might look at me sideways and say, oh, no, it's not. Look at all these other people. Look at all that. That's, that's smoke and mirrors. It really is. Because if I go down to the courthouse and file a lawsuit and hire a lawyer, it would have been handled right away. But we would add to your so-called cap to, the, to, your, to your lawyer's expenses. But seemingly, that's the only way things get done, a.k.a. Mr. Nunemacher, who asked for $15 worth of paperwork and ended up costing the city $20,000. I'm owed this. I gave you a state statute. You said that this is a public entity which is governed by state policies. I gave you the state policy which says that I am old, I should be paid those hours that I work. It has totally been ignored. I gave it to Mr. Costner here back in March. Nothing. I gave it to you and me. I still heard nothing. Nothing. I've also have done research since I resigned that um, I was told I was not eligible for sick pay. Um, I contacted the Department of Labor they told me anything that is considered earned, which is the time that I'm asking about, is payable. I looked up the contracts for union and non-union workers. I was a non-union, non-contractual worker, okay? Um, I see you pick and choose who you give that to because um, I know former police chief was paid $94,000 after being convicted. He might have had a different union. I was like Deborah Heck, who resigned. <clears throat> rescinded and then you forced her out. You paid her $31,000 of her sick pay. I'm asking for 22 days that was owed to me that I earned. Not time that I was looking forward to getting for this year coming, but for what I've earned for the previous years that I was there. I'm being told I'm not eligible for it. Oh, you don't get it. But yet other people get theirs. I say there's a double standard in the city. I don't want to play the card, but I will play the card. I think it goes across racial lines. Yeah, you, 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 you put little people in place in an office and, oh, we, we, we brought in more money. You put them in positions that actually really mean nothing. They don't have a real voice. They don't. Things ain't going to really be done around here. And, and, and like they said, with Mr. Rotino, you, you can't talk to him. You can't talk to the man. To, to, and you know, and I'm not even going to go there. Um, but like I said, it's been over a month since I presented it to the public and yourself. And I've heard nothing, not anything, not a phone call, not a letter, not anything from anybody regarding this. Um, like I said, I, I came, my family came to this town in 66. My mother, 32 years with the school system. My sister's 28 years at the hospital. I was 16 years in here. You know, I think I deserve my family from being from Hackensack, which some of you people probably aren't originally from Hackensack, but you work here and get money from here. I think being from Hackensack, my family doing for Hackensack, I deserve a little bit more respect than what I'm getting. I don't think I should have to go in my pocket and get a lawyer to get respect. But see, that's the only respect y'all seem to understand. The common person can't come. See, I voted for y'all because I felt everybody was just, you know, not, no disrespect. You were like, you know, you weren't politicians. You were common people like we were. And you would understand the working Joe, but you don't. Y'all done got to the politics, you all got politically <coughs> drunk with power, and y'all don't care nothing about the little man I see. And like I said, I have more chapters. I've worked for the city. I'm still in contact with a lot of city employees. I'm hearing about all the whatever's going on. And 
being I got nothing to lose no more, oh, trust me, I'm going to keep just writing more and more chapters to the books of the BS that's going on in this city. Thank you. Steve Calvert, 304, Clinton Place. Um, got three quick items I want to talk about, but the first one, I don't want my time wasted on it, so I'll put the question out there. And if Mr. Coster should wish to answer it at the end, that's fine. He's got a whole four and a half minutes to think about a good answer. Um, the camp system, when an employee is hired, um, you do your camp's intake sheet, and then you put it into the computer system, and camp's now knows who the new employee is, and they're inputted into the computer, and everyone knows who it is. Um, apparently, when Mr. Catania was hired, the camp's input sheet was done, but it was not entered into the camp system. Now, when I spoke with camps, because I opened the original input into the camp system to confirm that he was hired as a full-time employee, which everyone has been saying, and which the paperwork trail would show, um, which is in violation of city ordinance, but we seem to have not addressed that either yet. Um, the paperwork, which paperwork is what it is, and it can be put in a file at any time, but what would be put in a computer system wouldn't lie. For some reason, and the only possible answer is that the personnel director isn't doing his job properly, um, that information was not put into the computer system until after I opened it from the county, and the county called Mr. Coster and asked him why it wasn't put in the system. So I'd just like to know if that's just a routine thing or if camps was fibbing to me when they told me that it would be customary good practice that when people are hired, the input sheets are completed and put in the system. As to Mr. Rutino, we've discussed this to death. However, how many sick and vacation days does he get? He doesn't come to meetings and apparently he doesn't come to his office anymore. That's something that needs to be addressed. Whether or not all of these residents coming here and all of these residents begging and begging for you to take action isn't enough, the guy is not even here anymore and he continues to get his big, fat check. This needs to be addressed. Now, Mrs. Geddes came here and pointed out all the money that I have cost this city for my constitutional right to submit an open request and know what it is that my government is doing. I commend her for doing that because it is her right to do that. However, it seems that the legal cap that we've put in place was nothing more than a smoke and mirrors PR show. Because you guys passed a resolution that from January 1 to June 30th, routine legal expenses would not exceed $15,000 per month. I understand that when the city gets sued, that goes above and beyond that routine cap. If we are in a lawsuit, we can bill that on a separate line item. However, the resolution is very clear that routine daily communications, and that general legal research submit to the $15,000 a month cap. However, after I brought it to everyone's attention that seemingly only my Oprah requests were being billed on their own ledger, now Oprahs are routinely put on their own ledger, which is above and beyond the $15,000 a month cap. Now, I have all the bills from January 1st to present that have been redacted, and I have gone through, and I have looked at the very broad resolution, and I've calculated up what I feel to be general and routine that are not subject to lawsuits that are above and beyond that $15,000 a month cap. And the number's pretty big. Um, I commend Mr. Salkin for wanting to sue the city for the $5,000 that Mrs. Battaglia got inappropriately. However, I look at the legal fees and what is, because there's no better explanation than this was a PR stunt and now we're gonna continue to bilk for legal fees. It's bilking. You guys had a good faith conversation and negotiation with your city attorney who agreed to a $15,000 cap. That $15,000 a month cap is being exceeded. He is bilking us on legal fees above and beyond a cap that was put in place. Was it a PR stunt? Was it something that Tom suggested you guys do? Or was it something that was negotiated and put in place for the betterment of our city and our tax dollars? Because I've asked about this on several occasions and I have yet to get an answer, but now I'm putting the city on notice that I will go forward and try to recover every single dollar of those legal fees that may have been inappropriately billed above a $15,000 a month cap when they shouldn't have been. And I would really like an answer on that at the next meeting because I brought it to your attention several times. 
And Mr. Coster, if maybe you have an answer about this camps thing. Yeah, you are correct. I was notified by civil service and I had to put it in immediately. Paperwork was sent down and it wasn't entered at the time when the paperwork was sent down. Not intentionally, it just wasn't. So. <clears throat> that is the process. Some people right. that are very creative with their video software would think I'm a conspiracy theorist. But it just so happens that Mr. Catania's paperwork didn't get put into the system until after there was an issue. Mr. Galbraith, your time is up. I'm sorry. I'm Richard Serbo from 46 Spring Valley Avenue, Hackensack. You know, there's a contention in the room and I just wanted to mention how noticeable it is and I would I will say that opposition is good good healthy opposition is good but opposition also needs to uh, contribute and, and work with you so I just wanted to start by saying that um, I've got a list of things here I'll just go through them uh, a couple of weeks ago our the last meeting I was at Francis uh, Kojelja brought up litter in the city and she mentioned an area around the high school and a couple other places. But I, I just I just want to say that the litter is everywhere in Hackensack. I, uh, as a pedestrian, walk around town uh, and I carry uh, garbage bags with me because there's always trash to pick up in Hackensack. Now you say, well, it's just litter, okay? It's, it's not a big problem. But it signals a socioeconomic problem. Investors move to the next town. People don't want to come here. They don't want to live here. They don't want to send their kids to school here. They don't want to shop here. So litter is, it may be just a little problem to some people, or it's a blight on the eye, but it's a, it's a larger problem. So. Um, I mentioned the jobs program uh, last time I was here. I guess there's no chance in that hearing what we heard tonight. But uh, I, think it, I think it requires uh, at least thinking about it. At least think about having uh, jobs available in Hackensack City for someone you know, to get a job. Um, what else? Hackensack's diversity, is, it's our strength, you know, uh, celebrate it, mention it, sell it to the outside world, okay? We need an ambassador for this city to sell Hackensack, bring in your, your investment. Who, whose job is that, anyway? I, I mean, it, it, is there a job, does someone have a job that, you know, brings in investment by celebrating our city it's the only diverse city around here we have a we have a position which is economic development which is but that's okay mainly with that's fine right okay well i mean th there's there's so much there's so much area here to develop this should be a boom town okay great okay uh, uh, victor sasson mentioned the why the hospital and the county are sort of you know not contributing i agree with them i think they should they should contribute more uh, and if they don't why not have some of these other northern uh, suburbs north of route 4 contribute to Hackensack we we deal with all the services here have them contribute to us my idea years ago same exact idea. well let's think about it again and uh, all right I guess that's about it I uh, I thank you for my 300 seconds, and uh, <laughs> have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Serbo. How are you, Mr. McAuliffe? Charles P. McAuliffe, 119 Dorchester Road, Hackensack, New Jersey. <clears throat> I'm aware that the state of New Jersey has a anti-disturbance statute that covers the bad people like me that may, may go cuckoo in a meeting. However, when you open the meeting up to the public, Mr. Mayor, you read kind of a riot act. 
to the people as far as the decorum, how the meeting is going to go. Could you show me the resolution or ordinance that gives you that authority? There is no resolution, Mr. McCulloch. It's just kind of a, a me asking an agreement between the council and the and the citizens to try to act respectful towards each other, a civil. But you're, I understand what you're doing, and, and you can limit the, the time that a person says something. Mm -hmm. But I notice that there's quite a few times that you'll kind of step on somebody's constitutional right by trying to stop them. If you had a, a decorum resolution, it would really spell out what your authority is. And I think you can ask your attorney that, that question at a meeting. And I think that the resolution should be drafted by the next council. <coughs> you have an after hours club here tonight. You should discuss it then. Scott, you're an attorney. You think you know what I'm talking about, right? Sure. And I think it should be done. I think it was requested once before. That little note on there, it doesn't cut it. You're going to end up with a lawsuit if you don't have a decorum policy. The quorum resolution of the quorum. It's very important that you do that. Your lawsuit is going to make taxpayers like me pay a bill. I don't want that to happen. I don't want you to put yourself in that situation. That's all. Have a I good appreciate night. it. I'll take appreciate that in. Right. And we will discuss it with the attorney. Thank you. Good evening. Jared Wexler, 89 Burn Street. Uh, I just have a very brief question. Um, I know we've discussed paving to uh, many, many times. And I, I would just like to know how the city arrived at what streets it was going to pave. I think uh, I speak for a lot of people that were sitting here tonight as they discussed some of the streets that were paved. Some of the responses were, where is that? And why would you pave that street? So I'm just looking for a little insight into where, how that decision was made. OK. May I? Oh, please. Let me start by saying we, we only pave usually with matching grants, CBGB grants, and it's matching funds. Believe it or not, those grants go out based on the uh, demographics and actually the, some of the income in the areas uh, for, for the streets to be paved. In other words, you can't take that money and pave a different street. It has to be a designated street by the state where you get, or county or state where you get that, that funding. So that has a lot to do with it right off the bat. Um, the other thing is we do pick what streets which are recognized by the <clears throat> by the people who give us the grant which are the worst ones um, this time they were some like offbeat streets I noticed that because but last year it was the hills it was Marvin Kaplan over that way uh, Simons maybe but this year I know Lodi, Lodi Street was like the Baja all right now a lot of people don't go down Lodi Street but if you do you <laughs> you knew it but uh, the streets they did were really bad, though. That's that's how they came to that assumption. Okay. Thank you very right. much. You're welcome. Hi, uh, Rich Gelber, 304 Clinton Place. <laughs> Mayor, just a, a couple things. Um, I, I read that NJ.com forum, and I don't know if that stuff is true on there, but some of it really does catch my eye. Is Mr. Martino still the interim city manager here? Yes, he is. All right. Mayor, does he have any responsibility to come in and do his job? Yes, he does. Now, I don't want to get on petty little things, but I know he has a city car. It's, it's, it's a police car. And I know that it's been in his driveway for three weeks. Is there any possible reasonable explanation why that car is not coming here the few times that he's been here in the last few weeks? Do you know, Mayor, by any chance? I do not know. All right. Uh, I'm told very reliably that, you know, someone is monitoring it carefully. That car has not left his driveway. There's something radically wrong here. Something radically wrong. Now, I certainly am not here to take attendance or watch this guy. But clearly, clearly, he is not coming in here and doing his job. He's not here again tonight. Uh, I, I can't imagine why. Th there's an actual rumor circulating. And, and, and let me say first, I, I have a dog. I, I love my dog like a member of the family. But somebody's alleging that he was out for over a week because his dog was ill. Now. Mayor, that's, that is startling. Somebody said to me, oh, well, that's nothing. He's out because his kid got hit by a Frisbee. I, is somebody really, is somebody casting these jokes in town? We have, we have a police department 
one and a half years without a contract. Is he here even working on that? Is he sitting at the table in good faith, Mayor? I don't think he is. I don't think he is. I think this council has to address the city manager thing. This city, we have financial problems. It's very clear on, on that subject. Mayor, we're having fireworks. We are $10 million short right now. We're having a summer concert. I just, I just don't know if that's prudent spending right now. We don't have money to give the cops a meager, meager contract. They're not looking for a lot. Also, do we have new management and sanitation, Mayor? Yes, we do. Is Mr. Coster still running sanitation? I don't believe so. Do you, Mr. Coster? Yes, I do. Oh, you do? I thought it was uh, John. <clears throat> what? The assistant super supervision of the department. Okay. Mayor, not, not being sarcastic or anything, I know, I've watched the police department in those H-cop cars that I believe are 10 or 12 years old at least. Why are these valuable cars, why is Mr. Coster, who's supposed to be personnel, I, I don't think the city of New York gives their personnel director a police car. It's outrageous, Mayor. We can't, we're worrying about 10 million, 20 million, we have to start somewhere. I think the police department needs those cars desperately right now. If they have to take archaic cars that were put aside for H cops for very non-emergent matters and put them out with policemen, how could Mr. Coster be hogging a police car? The city manager has a car in his driveway for three weeks. Mayor, you've got to look at this. And, and if, it's, if this is false information, so we should know that. I think we need a city manager. I think we need him desperately, quickly. I urge you. Please get us a city manager. Thank you. Thank you. Regina DePasqua, Parker Avenue. Um, oh, because I'm short, okay? Um, first, I'd like to uh, let everybody know that the Hackensack Elks are having a blood drive on June 28th from 9 to 2. It's at 37 Linden Street. Um, I have heard that Hackensack Hospital closed their blood room. True? That is true. And this is community blood is the only source of blood for northern New Jersey. And June 28th is right before 4th of July weekend. So anybody that can come down to Hackensack Elks, 9 to 2, we're having a blood drive. Okay. Um, now, I would just like to... Um, this is something popped up on my Facebook page this week. Um, I thought it was very fitting for this council and for this um, city that the secret of change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new. Forget. Don't blame. Don't point fingers. Don't, I don't care who was on the budget committee. That just is like, you know, I don't care what somebody did last year. Move forward. You have it. You gotta handle it, do it, just do it. I don't want to know, I don't care who did what six months ago, who hurt whose feelings, I don't care. Move forward, handle city business. With the, the meeting last week being canceled, that was embarrassing. It was absolutely embarrassing. Um, it should never happen. It shouldn't happen. And if we had a city manager who impressed upon you how important it was, was to be here, then we would have had the meeting last, last time. But our city manager seems more concerned about hiring the video for the cow meeting. For what? As I said at the cow, if he was here, he would, he would know what's going on. He wouldn't have to videotape the cow meeting. And I don't know what gives him the right to use a city vendor Last time he did it while he was working. This time he's using a city vendor for his own personal purposes. That, there's an ethics line there. There's a lot of ethics lines that, that have been getting blurred lately. And it's, um, it's a shame because you can do better and we absolutely, we do deserve better. We don't deserve having, I, have, I voted for all of you. I, I, I sat with you, Rose, I sat with you. And now you have turned like, I, I can't believe. Everybody is wrong. You have to, you do character assassination. Tom does character assassination. Anthony tells everybody half a story and, you know, even dealing with the public, 
he does he's not he's not forthcoming he's not he's not a good fit for Hackensack and we have been telling you this and telling you this and for, for all of us from different walks to be telling you the same thing we're all wrong we're all wrong I don't think so I really don't think so um, so the city car is MIA along with our city manager city property where is it somebody's getting paid is he doing redevelopment work? Because he's getting paid for redevelopment work. Is he doing anything? Is he doing any work? Because if he's not working, how does he get all, is Stephen Gilbert asked this question too. How does he get all that time? How did he in, in 10 months get all this time off? How is that possible? And, and get the stipend and whatever else and the city car and then you know, give his friend uh, the benefits, it, that's insane. It's insane, and it's all on the backs of the taxpayers. We deserve better, we really do. And I know you can do better if you work together. If you work together. If you're gonna work against each other, if you're gonna keep saying the old, the old, this happened, that happened, you're gonna be spinning your wheels and wasting our money. You need to work together. And if you don't want to, you need to resign. Okay, if you do not want to work as a team, remove yourself. Remove yourself because you're stopping the progress. Um, I have a question, the last um, ordinance or re resolution. What was special counsel hired for? Mr. Morris. Talking about Alexander Carver? Yeah. Uh, employment investigation. Employment investigation? Yes. Okay. All right. I'll write that one down. Um, also, as far as is Rotinos, yeah, where is he? What what does he do? That would be that would be that requires an investigation. That absolutely requires an investigation. Um, I would just like to point out just a point that um, the council, you make the laws, uh, and it is up to the city manager to be the administrator of it. And as far as the details, that is on the city manager and he should be handling it, and he should be getting back to people with questions that have not been answered. You have Mr. Salkin, Mr. Barreto, Mr. Nunemacher, Mr. Warden, Steve Gelber, Richard Serbo, Charles McAuliffe, Jared Wexler, and Rich Gelber all came up here tonight. I hope somebody will get back to every single one of them with an answer. Okay, Kathleen Savo, good, uh, 184 Hudson Street, good evening. Um, it's been almost a year that, that this group has been in, and I find, it very, find them very disappointing. And I don't think it's because of, of them individually, because they all brought to the table something important, and I had faith in everybody. I think it's the person who, who screwed them, excuse my expression, was the city manager. I mean, you first started off with the wrong one, which was Steve Leocano, and then you put appointed a worse one, which was Anthony Rettino. Um, we are city manager run. The person who was brought to the table or to the um, position of helping the city actually damaged the city. He was not the problem. He, he was not the solution. He, was, he became the problem. And we're all seeing this, and all of us in this room agree on one thing. And we all, like Regina said, we come from different walks of life. Can we get rid of him by next Tuesday? What, what are we... <laughs> I mean... What, what, what is wrong with you people? I mean, you, what does it have to do? Come and hit you on the head and stamp it? How, how much more is he going to rape the city? And this is what he's done to us. He's raped every one of us. He's pitted you against each other. We, we can work to positive energy. There's so much the valuable, uh, uh, what do I want to call it? Resources, thank you, up there, and, and it's all working against each other. Roll up your sleeves. We have a big, a big problem to do, and I commend our, our CFO. I mean, he, it, it must have been crazy to go through all those numbers and mind-boggling. And if you couldn't find the answer for that one thing of what happened there, how is a layperson like the mayor going to find that out, being on the committee? Why don't we ask the old CFO how they, how they messed up the city of Hackensack all those years? Because that's where the problem lied. How, did they, how were they allowed to do all that all these years? So I'm asking you, please, by next Tuesday, can we get rid of Anthony? Can we get a real city manager with experience, professionalism, to, to do it, to do something? And, and get rid of these cars. You're all going to take cars away. Art lives in Hackensack. He doesn't need a car. 
He sits at the office. He's got a position, in, an, in, an in-service position. Anthony doesn't need a car. Let him bring his own car to work. We said we were going to do this, and we're not doing it. Nobody, else, nobody gives cars to anybody. The other mayor that came in when you people did, he took all the cars away, wherever it was. He took all the cars away the first week. We said we were going to do it, and we don't. We have people riding around in, in junks when they could be utilized. And why do we give the constable a, a police car? He, he comes up like, like the sheriff of whatever with that, with that police car. Or we, our people could, could use that, that police car. We don't, need, we don't need our constable to use a police car. And um, all right, are you you're a constable also? Yes. But do you ever write any summonses out? Uh, most of the time, I let the uh, current constable do that. All right, so you don't even need a car because you're not you're behind the desk. So there's a car right there. He's giving up his car tonight. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> all right, I'll drive you home. <laughs> Hello, people. You said you were going to do this. Let's work together. We have a lot of po all these people are here to help us, and they give a lot of positive input, and I think it's great. The other thing is questions that come here are supposed to be answered, and the man who's supposed to take care of it is the city manager. Sometimes I write things out, and I go to the right department, and I do it the next day. But the city manager is supposed to give answers, and he's not doing that. And it's really an embarrassment to this whole city. We have a big budget. We have a lot of money. We have a lot of problems. Roll up your sleeves, and let's, get, let's put Hackensack back where we said it's going to be. Thank you. Yeah. Motion to close. Offer. Are we going to make comments? Yes, yeah, afterwards. Okay. That, I'm sorry. You seconded. Oh. Council Member Battaglia. Aye. Deputy Mayor Canestrino. Aye. Council Member Sims. Aye. Council Member Greenman. Aye. Mayor LeBron. Aye. Mr. Battaglia. Thank you, Jim, for the good job that you did with the boys sent to Kathy and Rob for the participants the same, and that's it. Thank you for coming. Ms. Castrino? I'll do, the best I can. <clears throat> I'll do the best I can with his voice. I know you're all heartbroken that you can't hear me. Um, <clears throat> terrible cold. Uh, again, I just have to say that Jim did an outstanding job, and um, I think for the first time in forever, you see not only are we focusing on this year, but we're looking at for the years ahead. And that was something that I've personally been talking about for years and years and years. And it's very, very important to our long-term uh, stability in this city to do that. And, and we're very appreciative of that effort. It was not easy. It took a lot of work. He was here a lot of late nights. But you know, we have, what we have is a budget that I, I do believe we can be very proud of. Yes, it increased by $2 million. But when you look at why it increased by $2 million, Insurance alone went up by $2.2 .2 million. So just think if it didn't, if we didn't have that, we, in, in essence, we would have had a flat, perfectly flat budget. And there's no blame, there's no blame to be, to be passed around. Um, it, it's just reality. You know, we're looking at how do we fix this and move forward. I'm not blaming the past. I'm not blaming anyone. We're in this situation now, and we have to do what's best for this city. And we were faced with this. We're not sweeping it under the carpet. We're not kicking the can down the road. We're addressing it head on. This budget accommodates the proper data that supports the medical insurance. Uh, Jim showed you, did you, you should, talked about a form. Um, there's a budget form that actually is required by the state where you explain in detail how you arrive at your insurance. We're going to do the presentation on that form uh, for the public hearing. Okay, I had it in my mind that it was here. Um, that's something that's never been done before. So all of these things provide us with two things when you review a budget. You want it to be reasonable and you want it to be traceable. You want to understand where those costs are generated from so that you can use that information to manage your city, to track that information and manage that city. One more statement about the, um, about the insurance, because last time I remember when we talked about this, there were some questions from the audience. Just so you understand, we are self-insured. So that means we are liable for paying the insurance claims of our employees. So this $2.2 million is the outcome of us having an, an increase over the last couple of years in claims that are being processed. And I'm sure driving health costs that are going higher is a key contributor there as well. So this is true reality. These are actual costs, and they're included in this budget, and we still managed to keep it right at $2 million, which, again, deserves a, deserves a, a, a wonderful, uh, we should actually applaud you, Joe. Um, one last thing, I'm very happy with the budget. I think, as I said, I think it's reasonable. I think it's accommodating. 
Now we have to move forward. We have to make sure that the decisions that we make on spending are in the best interest of the city. We have the, we have the pockets put in place to control the spending. When you're, when you're running a department, when you're running a city, you need to prioritize how you're going to spend the money that's in that pocket. And that's, I think, where we as a council have to come together and make sure that that starts happening. Right now, I have a number of concerns about how some of our money is being spent. And I think we need to come together as a group and address that. Thank you for coming, and sorry for the bad voice. But I didn't call out sick. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Sims. We want to thank you for coming out tonight. I was told in the back earlier by the labor attorney and the CFO that they're going to sit down with the PBA July 2nd. Hopefully we can resolve this contract. As Mr. Costa said, we have one week left to sign up for camp in the city. So take care. Get home safe. Thank you. Ms. Freeman. Thank you. I just want to express, I, guys, I respect you anyway. Even if you disrespect me, I'll respect you. Um, I want to thank you, Jim, uh, for a great job that you did. I know you spend many weeknights and weekends here working Saturday and Sunday late into the night. It looks marvelous. Let's hope that we can implement it and follow through and do a good job. Um, I'd like to thank people for attending tonight's meeting and taking part in this conversation and in uh, taking part in, in this government that we're trying to run better than it's running now. I have listened to many of you and I appreciate the passion that you bring to many of the issues. It's very clear that we're not going to agree on everything and not agree on every issue. Unfortunately, many of these issues are colored by politics. It's unfortunate. I want to address the unspoken audience that is not heard and not coming here. There are many people in this city that support us and support the kinds of change that, you, that we bring to this community. And these are the people that I'd like to address. While um, many of you bring all this passion here, unfortunately, people who are watching us via videotape are put off by very low level of discourse and a very high level of rancor that unfortunately has been dominating for the last 10 months, 11 months. I want to reassure the people at home that you don't need to be loud, you don't need to be self-serving, you don't need to be calculating to be heard by us. We are here for everyone. I don't want anyone to be afraid or feel uncomfortable in coming here and expressing your concerns. We are here for everyone in the city. Unfortunately, some small groups of individuals have taken control of these meetings. But every citizen is entitled to come here and bring their concerns to us. You do not have to be part of political organization to be heard by myself or the rest of the council, if I may speak for the rest of the council. Um, I welcome everyone's idea and insight on how we can improve Hackensack and make it better. When we were elected last year, we ran promising to bring change to the city. And I think we made a lot of great positive changes. And they get drawn out by a lot of truly uncalled for uh, comments. 
But if you put all of this political theater aside, you will see that a lot of things have been taking, a lot of things have taken place just in the last few months. <coughs> Paving of the streets, pick up of the garbage twice a week. Um, I think we have incredibly talented people on our staff. And I'm going to again say, Jim, you're, you're wonderful. Mr. Rutine did an incredible job. That's, that's my belief. I appreciate our attorneys, Joe and Tom Scrivo. Our employment attorney, Mr. Fernandez, Mr. Rasso, who does tax appeals um, defense work for us. I appreciate Jackie, who does an incredible job, and she's here 7.30 in the morning till late at night. She should make you proud. Debbie Carlson, who stepped in and did incredible job being helped by Regina. Thank you. Um, we were left, unfortunately, to clean up a very messy financially and in many other respects situation. I believe that this city is now running more efficiently and we're getting more done with less money. We have cleaned up, thanks to our attorneys, a backlog of legal cases we've inherited. Um, we're addressing flooding issues by simply cleaning out a clogged source that was not done in years and years. We are in the process of, of curing financial mistakes and malfeasances Sorry. that we're addressing. Absolutely, look it up. Uh, in addressing the shockingly neglectful tax appeal burden that was left at our doorstep. We are governing by being responsible. And all of the critics in the world cannot disguise the fact, nor can they dissuade me or any other councilman here from continuing our mission. And our mission is to bring positive change to the city. I want to repeat again that I appreciate the support of the silent majority. And I will continue to watch. The next is alive and well. Excuse me. Please. I've heard enough. I can promise you that we will continue to address the needs and concerns of all of this, all of the people of this city. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Um, I'm gonna start off with Jim. Probably the most professional budget presentation I've ever seen. I mean, really, really just pops up. I mean, put into a layman's type situation in terms that people can understand and uh, that's what's needed. Um, proud, very proud of that. Thank you. Uh, very proud that this city received the number one award in the state of New Jersey for its rehabilitation and redevelopment plan. That was uh, eight cities in the state received awards that night for different things, but ours was based on our redevelopment plan and uh, we came in second last year and they were paying attention. They saw what we were doing with some of some of the sales going on in the street and we ended up getting that award. It was a wonderful night. Uh, we have, we got a couple of, uh, I don't know where they put them, but we have the, the nice plaque. Uh, 150, 170 Main Street went down to uh, Trenton last week. It's being sent down, it's uh, to be made, a, <clears throat> deemed an area in need of rehabilitation. That's a, a, a great step for that project uh, and that'll be coming back in about five, six months and look forward to having shovels in the ground. Uh, tax appeals. 
Mr. Salk is gone, but uh, yes, he's right. I was here for the tax appeal. Oh, he's still here. He's back. Rick. I never walk out on you, John. You know that. Thank you, sir. I'm not defending anything, but I will tell you this. Any tax appeal that came before me in that back room uh, was approved and okayed by me. I can tell you that much. Okay? And I was also the only, I don't want to say the only one, but I was in favor of going to the yearly assessment from the get-go on that because I think it's the right thing to do. I still think it's the right thing to do and we're going to do that. So um, I want to thank Mike Shannon coming. I don't know if he's still here or not for supporting the plan uh, and the park. Um, to speak briefly, I'm not going to go into detail because I can't on these group homes. I mean, these things, they, they were a surprise to, watch as, uh, to us as much as they were to you. Um, and I just found out there's another one in town. But uh, if Mr. Morris would like to elaborate on that, there's a state statute on there that it, it's almost impossible or is impossible to even, even challenge it. But uh, if you would, please. There's a statute, it's uh, NJSA 40 colon 55D-661. Uh, group homes are treated as single family dwelling units um, and, and they're treated um, and as such can be in any, have to be in any residential district and municipality. Essentially, there, there was um, litigation on the federal and state level in the 80s and early 90s regarding group homes. Um, federal government came in and strongly pushed for group homes because Many municipalities in this country were spot zoning against group homes. So uh, federal government forced state legislatures to take action. Um, and I, if anyone wants a copy of this um, state statute, please feel free, I'll give it to them afterwards. But it's pretty clear the city's hands are, are tied. It's really a state issue. If you want to speak to your legislature about it, that would be no, I'd like to, the appropriate course of action. Some good, some points were brought up tonight about, you know, is everybody getting a, you know, a piece of the pie or is it just Hackensack? Um, and the other thing is my concern, um, which Mr. Barreto, I don't know if he's still here, Joe, is, you know, I mean, the residents are, you know, certainly deserving of having housing and everything else, but I mean, it's who's watching these people. I would like to know as a mayor who's really watching what's going on in these houses. And uh, I think it needs to be monitored. And we have to have some type of assurance from whoever's running that particular home that those people are, uh, not a danger to themselves or anybody else. I mean, that's that's a fair thing for a municipality to ask from somebody running a group home. Uh, Mr. Warden, are you still here? Mr. Warden would not receive a response back from any council member because council members do not deal with personnel matters in this form of government. Uh, that would be between personnel director and or the city manager. So yes, I did receive paperwork from him, but it would be improper for me to respond in any way, shape or form to him due to possible litigation. Um, the cars, the car in the driveway, I can't answer that, but I, we'll look into it. Um, what else do we have? Meetings. It's, you know, we have to, you know, certainly somebody's on their deathbed or really sick, guys, I understand. But we have to, we had, this is very important business here. We have to try to make every meeting. Mrs. Canestrino is a perfect example. She's <clears throat> she's got a fever before she came here. She's sick, but she's here. And uh, sometimes, you know, I've been there. I to places I don't want to go, or even here sometimes when I didn't feel good. But you, you got to try and get here. I understand that it's not always going to happen, but we have to try. And we are continuing our search for a city manager. We're going to continue. We're going to go back out, maybe a little bit more of an extensive search, and uh, see what we can come up with. All right. And uh, July 4th's coming up. July 4th fireworks. I know, you know, I, I understand the comment. I cut the fireworks out, cut the shows out. And, and it's, it's easy to say that, but you know what? That's not what the problem in the city is. And actually, that's part of the solution. Um, we need to bring people into this town. We need to bring, we need to clean Hackensack up, bring them into this town, show them what a great place it is, all right? Shutting people, shutting the city down and keeping people out of it is a totally wrong thing. It goes totally against the whole plan. So that's, you know, I can appreciate the fact, yeah, it's easy to cut down fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 off a of budget by, by taking care of some entertainment expenses. But I, I think they pay off in the long run, especially now with the redevelopment plan underway. Um, the park, still in limbo right now. We're working on it, all right, working on some other things. And... Uh, 
actually one of the one of the, I'm not going to say who, but one of the attorneys actually changed his mind and wants to park now. So go figure. <laughs> <laughs> Can't figure you attorneys out for my life. Um, and that's it. I think that's it. All right. Thank you, everybody, yeah. for coming. Have a good night. We need thank a you. Motion. Motion. We need a motion. To oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Motion. Don't go any motion. Motion to close. Offered. All in favor? Aye. <laughs>